Hello friend, welcome back to my channel. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's Tim here and in this video I'm going to guide you through the steps to create this autumn inspired farm landscape painting. I am so excited for fall to finally be here. I'm from Ohio and Ohio is known for their farmlands and it's so beautiful at this time of year so I wanted to create a painting inspired by them. If you should recreate this painting and are on Instagram, I would absolutely love to see it. So please tag me at Tim Star Studio. I actually had a little mishap with this painting too. It was kind of funny when I was recording, I had the window open and ended up recording a bunch of cricket and cicada sounds over the top of my audio, which is fitting because it's a farm painting, but not so great to edit. So I definitely learned a lesson there. So if I can impart any wisdom, don't record audios with the windows open. I wanted to say thank you so much for supporting my channel and I'm so excited to share with you what I've been working on these last couple of weeks. More fun things and painting tutorials to come. Upcoming here are the hex codes for the palette of colors that you'll need to be able to paint along with me. And here are the brushes that I used which are all to some degree in the Procreate default library. The only brush that isn't in the iPad version is the damp brush. It is still available in Pocket Procreate for iPhone but I do also have a video up on my channel on how to read create the brush from scratch for iPad so if you need it definitely go check it out. The first step for our painting tutorial is to take a screenshot of this trace outline layer, insert the screenshot into a square size canvas on Procreate and size it to fit and then in a separate layer trace over the outline so you will have a guide for your painting. Feel free to take any breaks that you might need along the way and when you're ready let's begin. All right, so getting into the tutorial, I thought it might be kind of helpful also to share some examples of the type of paint strokes that we're going to be using in the section ahead. So I hope that will be helpful for you. So the first step of our tutorial is to turn the trace outline layer down to about 10%. We're going to add a new layer and put it underneath the trace outline. Then using the first color in the first row, the turquoise blue, I'm going to color drop it and fill the entire canvas with this color. Next, let's add a new layer and put that layer into soft light. Using the fourth color in the first row, the shade of black, and using the paintbrush with the soft airbrush. With full size and full opacity, I'm going to outline a thin strip of color on the left-hand side of the canvas, the top, and then the right-hand side. Then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to about 56%. Let's add a new layer and put that layer into overlay. Now using the third color in the first row with full size and full opacity, I'm going to lay a stripe of color in the center of the painting and I'm going to kind of go over it a couple of times too just to make it a little bit wider. Then using Gaussian Blur again, we're going to blur this layer to about 55%. Now switching over to the damp brush with the blending tool, about 19% size and 28% opacity. With a very light hand, we're going to start on the left hand side using wide sweeping paint strokes kind of at a slight diagonal and we're going to buff and blend this highlight color over top of the entire canvas. When you're happy with your blending, we're going to merge all of our sky layers back down together into one. Now to paint the clouds. Let's add a new layer. Still using the third color in the first row, the color white, we're going to actually switch over to the damp brush now with the paint brush and use about 3% size and full opacity. To begin painting our clouds, we're going to start using a circular paint stroke. We're going to lay down a little bit of color for the first cloud on our trace outline. Then we're going to paint the second cloud underneath with the same painting motions. And then the third underneath of it, the smaller cloud. And then we're going to come over here to the right and start painting the fourth cloud and continue that cloud up to the edge. Now let's switch over to the blending tool, about 8% size and 40% opacity, still using the damp brush. We're going to blend out the entire cloud, kind of turning the cloud into an almost misty form, not completely getting rid of it, but not really worrying about the shape too much yet. 
and we're going to repeat this across for all of the clouds. Now switching back over to the paintbrush, we're going to go to about 4% size, full opacity on the same layer. And we're going to use a scrubbing paint stroke motion here on the edge of our trace outline layer for the clouds to create a sharper top edge for each cloud. We want this layer to be a little bit more defined, so you'll wanna use a smaller, more compact scrubbing motion if you pick up your paintbrush occasionally too, it will reset the brush stamp so it will be more opaque when you go to lay color down. And then I'm going to repeat another row below it to make it a little bit fuller. And then I'm going to repeat this across all four clouds. Now switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 4% size, 44% opacity. We're going to combine the circular painting strokes with the scrubbing motions, and we're going to blend the middle and the bottoms of each of our clouds out, but still preserving that top edge. And we're going to repeat this across all four clouds. Next, let's make a copy of this cloud layer. The bottom of the two cloud layers, we're going to use the damp brush with the blending tool, about 5% size and 39% opacity. And we're going to use loose scrubbing circular motions and kind of blend above and below each cloud line to kind of puff out the edges a little bit more and make them look a little bit more hazy. This is one of my absolute favorite ways to create a very dreamy looking autumn sky with very little work. And we're going to repeat this across all four clouds. When you're happy with your blending, I'm going to turn the opacity of the copy layer down to about 40% to kind of marry all of the textures together. Let's go ahead and turn off our trace layer. Then I'm going to merge the cloud layers and the sky layers back together into one. Now we're going to add some smaller details to our clouds. Using the blending tool with the damp brush again, about 2% size, 42% opacity. We're going to zoom up here and with a very light hand and small circular scrubbing motions, very lightly we're going to detail the edges of the top part of our clouds. And we're not completely breaking up the line of the cloud, we're just kind of adding little puffs and smears here and there just to kind of add some fun little details. And we're going to repeat this step across all four clouds. And when you're happy with your blending, I'm going to set our brush size to about 5% and the opacity at about 24%. And I'm just going to lightly kind of blend over any areas you can kind of still see the stamp pattern of the brush, just lightly blending it out here and there and marrying all of the cloud textures together. Detailing as little or as much as you'd like.
And when you're happy with your blending, it's time to paint the back trees. For this section, I'm going to be using up and down zigzag-ish cross-hatching motions, and I'm going to kind of vary the heights to create the illusion of some dense, shorter, and taller trees within it. And I'm mostly going to be using the water pen in this section. The water pen has quickly also become one of my favorite paintbrushes to use. Let's add a new layer and switch over to the water pen. Let's go to about 9% size, full opacity. And we're going to be using the sixth color in the first row. Starting on the left hand side, we're going to start using up and down zigzag cross hatching paint motions of varying heights to start creating our trees. We're going to start here on the left hand side and go slightly down with the smaller trees in direction. And at the base here, we're going to start working our way back up on the outline, gradually increasing the brush stroke size as we get further down the right side. When we get to the top, we're going to fill in the bottom section like this. When we get that filled in, we're going to grab the fifth color in the first row, the slightly lighter shade of green, and we're going to repeat the same step now only on the tops of the tree line. Still kind of varying our paint stroke heights just to make sure they end up taller and shorter. We're just going to add a little bit more detail color on the top line of these trees just to give it a little bit more dimension when we go to blend them out. Now switching over to the blending tool, we're actually going to change the blending tool over to the water pen as well now. Starting on the left hand side, about 10% size, full opacity. Using the same paint strokes, we're going to start blending the tops of the trees out and create a nice transparency between the background and the tree layer. It's in this layer too, we're going to start pulling out some small detail trees here and there too, so have fun and make sure to vary your paint heights here and there. And we're going to repeat this down the line. And when you get to the top, we're going to start blending the middle and the bottom together just to make it blend a little bit better together. When you're happy with your blending, let's make a copy of this layer. The top layer, I'm actually going to turn the opacity down to about 47% just to make it a little bit more opaque and darker. Let's merge the two layers together. Now we're going to add some smaller details to our trees using the same kind of technique, still using the water pen. We're actually going to go to like 5% size now, full opacity. Starting about here, at the top, we're going to use the same paint strokes, only thinner and smaller to pull out some more detailed trees here and there. This will also make the trees a little bit lighter and a little bit less opaque here at the top, which will actually make them look a little bit further away and add more depth to your painting. And we're going to repeat the same step down the line. When you're happy with your new layer of trees, I'm going to zoom out here and we're actually going to turn our tree layer off. We're going to make sure our trace layer is now turned on and we're going to begin painting the silo and the barn. To start painting our silo, we're going to switch back over to the paintbrush, now using the technical pen in the inking section, full size and full opacity. We're going to add a new layer using the third color in the second row. I'm going to paint a straight line down to begin our silo and I'm going to hold it down too to get a completely straight line. I'm going to paint the top the same way and then the right hand side the same way and then I'm going to close off the bottom. We're gonna color drop the main color and fill the silo completely in. Now using the second color in the second row, we're going to paint the top of the silo. 
To paint the top of the silo, we're going to paint an upside down U on the trace outline and then a straight line to close it. And then I'm going to fill the shape in with that same color as well. I'm going to turn the trace outline layer off for just a moment. Let's add a new layer using the second color in the second row. Let's turn the brush size down to about 45% and I'm going to paint a straight line on both sides of the silo edge to create an outline. And then I'm going to turn this new edge outline layer down to about 50% in opacity. Now that it's a little bit lighter, I'm going to merge the new edge layer and the silo layer back together so they're one again. Now I'm going to use the eraser tool with the technical pen and I'm going to clean up this right side edge here because it's kind of hanging over a little bit and it's bothering me. So if that happens, feel free to do so. When that's cleaned up, I'm going to switch over to the blending tool with the damp brush again. About 2% size, 36% opacity, and I'm going to lightly blend over the left side edge, just kind of softening it up a little bit and blending both sides together. And then we're going to repeat this on the right hand side and I'm going to repeat this on the top line as well. Let's add a new layer and put that layer into soft light. Next, switching to the paintbrush with the soft airbrush, about 18% size, full opacity, and using the fourth color in the first row, the shade of black, and we're going to paint a stripe of color in the center of the silo, and then fill in the right-hand side, just a little bit, but not quite up to the edge, leaving just a little bit of space. And then grabbing the first color in the second row, I'm going to repeat that on the left-hand side, so that way it's about half and half with each color. And then using Gaussian Blur, I'm going to blur it to about 11%. We're then going to turn the opacity of the shadow layer down to about 47%. Now using the damp brush with the blending tool, about 3% size, 47% opacity, I'm going to lightly blend the shadow layer out a little bit to give it a little bit of texture on the silo itself. This is a really clever and handy way of adding texture to an object within a painting without actually touching the object itself below it. When you're happy with your blending, we're going to merge the shadow layer and the silo together, and then I'm going to turn the silo layer off and turn the trace layer back on, and we're going to start painting the barn. Switching back over to the paintbrush with the technical pen, about 70% size, full opacity. In a new layer, using the fifth color in the second row, that dark shade of red, we're going to outline each line of the trace outline of the barn. When that's done, using the sixth color in the second row, the lighter shade of red, I'm going to color drop this color and fill each of the spaces of the barn outline just like this. When you have each space filled in, we're going to switch back over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 2% size and 67% opacity. Just like the silo, we're going to lightly blend and soften the lines of the barn outline and the inside color together to create a very soft edge, just like this. And we're going to repeat this across all of the edges.
When you get that all blended out, next let's add a new layer and switch back over to the paintbrush with the soft airbrush, about 11% size and full opacity. Let's use the first color in the third row and we're going to lay down a little patch of color in the middle of each of these spaces of the barn, leaving space around the edges. Then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to about 7%. And then with the blending tool again, with the damp brush, about 3% size, 43% opacity. We're going to lightly blend this new color in with the barn colors, just to create some nice texture over the top and kind of marry all of the colors together, just like we did with the silo. I'm going to make a copy of this texture layer so there will be two of them, and then we're going to turn the copy of the texture layer down to about 77% to make it a little less opaque, and then we're going to merge all three barn layers back together into one. Now we're going to add some detail outlines to the barn. Let's add a new layer on top of the barn, and then we're going to switch over to the paintbrush using the Narinder pencil, full size and full opacity. And I did turn the stabilization up just a little bit on this pencil just to make it a little bit easier to use. And using the third color in the second row, we're going to outline each edge of the barn just like we did before, only with this pale taupey brown color now. And we're going to repeat this step across all lines of the barn. And if you're having trouble with squiggly lines, you can always hold the line down without lifting your eye pencil, which will autocorrect it to a straight line automatically. When we get all of the edges outlined, I'm going to come up here and we're going to draw a little window detail on the top, which is so cute. And then I'm going to create an X shape in the middle on the outline, which then completes our barn. Now to paint the trees in the front. In this painting section, we're going to be using a scrubbing paint stroke along a curved edge to create the outer edge of each bush and to blend our colors together. And we're going to be merging this technique with a random zigzag cross-hatching-ish type painting motions, kind of similar to the ones we used in the back trees from earlier. And then we'll blend it out with the same random zigzag-ish paint strokes with the same brush. And here I wanted to show how we're actually going to combine both techniques to create our bushes. We'll be using longer sweeping paint strokes at first to create a gradient to blend our colors together. And then we'll be using a scrubbing paint stroke along the top curved edge to kind of puff out the edges a little bit, which will then kind of morph into the zigzag crosshatch paint stroke for the middle and the bottom areas, which will create a really beautiful texture and yet still be blended really nicely. Let's make sure our trace layer is turned on. Let's add a new layer underneath the trace layer. Using the sixth color in the first row, we're going to be using the water pen now, about 9% size, full opacity, and we're going to create the base layer of our bushes just like this. And on the outer bushes, I'm not going completely up to the top just because we're going to be covering it up in a moment. Then using the second color in the third row, we're going to outline all of our trees again, but just a little bit less and more on top of the green we just placed down. And we're going to follow the line up down our trace outline, now filling in the top part of the outline as well where the trees are. Each of the next colors we place down on our bushes are going to get progressively thinner in size. Next, using the third color in the third row, starting on the left-hand side, I'm going to paint another stripe of color on the tops of each of our bushes. Next, using the fourth color in the third row, let's make our brush size about 6%. That way it's a little bit smaller and easier to make thinner stripes. I'm going to put a small stripe of color starting on the left-hand side again on the tops of these bushes. Then
Then using the fifth color in the third row, we're going to repeat this with this lime shade of green on the middle bushes and only a very small patch on the left side of the first bush in front of the barn. Then using the sixth color in the third row, I'm going to repeat the step with a very thin line of color and we're actually going to stop in the middle of the bushes just like this. Then switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 3% size, 53% opacity. We're going to be using longer sweeping paint strokes to blend our colors together to create a nice gradient. We're not worrying about any textures yet. We're just blending and marrying all of our colors together in this stage. And we're going to repeat this for each bush. Now to create some texture, still using the blending tool with the damp brush, we're going to use about 2% size and 68% opacity. We're going to be using scrubbing motions on a curve, similar to how we did with the clouds from earlier, but we're going to be blending out the top first. And then as we get to the middle and the bottom, we're going to kind of switch over to the zigzag cross hatching motions to kind of blend the top color into the middle and then the bottom color into the middle as well to kind of create a nice little gradient and nice textures throughout. And I'm going to repeat this across each bush, kind of randomizing and making each one of them unique and different. On the bushes closer to the barn, I am making my paint strokes just a little bit bigger and a little bit more exaggerated because these are the bushes that are closest to the viewer, so I'm adding just a little bit more detail texture to them. And if you have any areas that are still too dark, you can always drag some of the lighter green from above down and then re-blend it out to kind of soften anything that's too dark. When you finish up painting the bushes in front of the barn and you're happy with your blending, we're gonna begin painting the field. Let's add a new layer, making sure the trace outline layer is back on. We're gonna use the first color in the fourth row and we're gonna switch over to the soft airbrush, about 11% in size, full opacity. I'm going to outline the field and then color drop to fill it in. Then on the same layer, using the fourth color in the second row, I'm going to scribble a little bit of this color with the soft airbrush on top of the field, just like this. And then using the damp brush with the blending tool, about 8% size, 70% opacity, we're going to lightly buff and blend this color into the brown of the field. Let's add a new layer. Using the second color in the fourth row, Starting on the left hand side, same size brush, I'm just going to scribble a little bit of this purple color over the field as well, just like this. Then I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 40%. And then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur it to about 13%. Then I'm going to merge both field layers together. Let's add a new layer and switch over to using the water pen. 
using the third color in the fifth row about 30% size full opacity starting on the right hand side edge. I'm going to start filling in the spaces in between our field lines on the trace outline leaving a thin brown line in between each edge. So on the trace layer, there are two different lines. There's a smaller line and a bigger line. We're only worrying about the main bigger lines right now, so don't worry about the small ones in between. And we're going to repeat the same step down the field just like this. Then we're going to switch over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 6% size, 64% opacity. I'm going to blend and buff out each one of these color blocks and kind of blur the color into the lineup just a little bit, softening that dark brown in between. And we're going to repeat the same step down the field. When you're happy with your blending, we're going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 65%, making it a little bit more of a golden brown color now. Let's add a new layer using the third color in the fifth row. I'm going to turn our brush size down to about 14% size, still using the water pen. And now I'm going to create two blocks of color that are thin within each block of color that we just painted just like this, now creating that smaller middle line that was in our trace outline from before. And we're going to repeat the same step down the line of the field. Here in the middle, I'm going to turn the sides down to about 10% brush size. That way I can make a smaller line towards the end. And then switching over to the blending tool like before, about 4% size, 35% opacity. We're going to lightly blend out each block of color just like before, kind of blending each color over the top of both lines, softening it all up, marrying all of our colors together. And then we're going to repeat the same step down the line. When you're happy with your blending, we're going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 74%. Next, we're going to merge all three field layers back together into one. Let's create a copy of this so now there will be two layers for our field, and we're going to work on the top layer. Still using the blending tool with the damp brush, I'm going to start here on the edge. We're going to use about 68% opacity and 1% size with the blending tool and the damp brush, and we're going to start laying some short up and down paint strokes over the entire field to create some detail texture. And you can kind of have fun varying between zigzag and singular paint strokes here. I will tell you the zigzag paint strokes will help make it go a little bit faster, but you'll definitely want to vary some singular ones in there too, just so it doesn't look a little crazy. When you're happy with your field details, we're going to do something fun and maybe a little unexpected. We're actually going to turn the opacity of this top layer that we're working on right now down to about 
This will help soften our field up quite a bit and help the new textures blend together with the field. It's one of my favorite ways to help textures blend together a little bit better without as much work. Next, let's merge our field layers back together into one. And then I'm going to turn our back tree layer back on and I'm going to turn our trace layer back on. Which brings us to part two and we're going to begin painting our little meadow area. So we're going to begin by painting the tree in the front. And in this section, our main method to create our trees will involve blending out a bunch of circles. So first we're going to be creating them and then blending them into a gradient. And then we're going to blend it out, adding our details and texture. This has definitely become one of my favorite ways to paint easy trees as well. So I'm super excited to share this with you. Let's add a new layer and turn our trace outline back on. I'm actually going to lay down a white background first to make it a little bit easier for us to see what's happening. So definitely feel free to do so too if that'll help you. And I would just put that in a singular layer by itself. So on a new layer with the white background below it, we're going to start with the water pen and the fifth color in the fourth row, about 8% size, full opacity. And over the top of our outline, we're going to paint a straight single line for the main trunk. And then off to the right, paint a slightly curved line for the second part of the trunk. And then with a really light hand, we're going to paint the tree branches just like this, creating a slight Y shape at the base where they connect. Let's add a new layer. And this is probably going to be a little weird at first, but my favorite method of painting trees involves painting circles and then blending them together. So to start in a new layer, about 21% size, full opacity, still using the water pen, using the first color in the fifth row, starting at the top left corner of the tree, we're going to paint three circles of varying sizes. Don't worry if they're perfect or not. Underneath, we're going to paint four more circles, only we're going to paint them in a bricklay pattern, so they're opposite of the ones above it, and we're going to leave a slight space in between each circle. In the next row, we're going to paint four more circles in a bricklay pattern. The next row, I'm going to paint three big circles and two small circles next to it up to the edge, just like this. In the next row, I'm going to paint four circles. And in the row underneath, I'm going to paint five more that are smaller and kind of smashed on top of the ones above it, just like this. Next, we're going to use the second color in the fifth row in a new layer. And I'm going to paint medium sized circles within each of the circles we just painted. And then we're going to repeat that on the entire tree. And then I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 65%, which will make the color less opaque and the circles appear a little bit darker than they were. Let's add a new layer. Still using the water pen in the same color, we're going to add some more circles inside the ones we just painted, just like before. Then using the third color in the fifth row, we're going to paint slightly smaller circles within each circle, and I'm going to focus these new circles in the middle topish area of each one. Not quite in the middle anymore, but not quite on the top but we are not going to put these colored dots on the bottom three circles so we can start creating a shadow for the tree. Let's add a new layer. Now using the fourth color in the fifth row, let's start placing even smaller circles in the same place as before, but in the center of the first three rows. And then we're going to put three around the edge, just like this, but we're going to leave the bottom left-hand side circles out so we can create a highlighting effect on what will become the top part of the tree. Then we're going to merge all the circle layers together, but do not merge it onto the trunk layer. Now switching over to the damp brush with the blending tool, about 6% size, 60% opacity. We're going to use a curved paint stroke, almost in the shape of a half circle to create a nice gradient blend between each color in the circle. We're not worrying too much about texture yet, but we're just going to repeat this process across all of the circles. Thank you. 
When you get the circles blended out, I'm actually going to turn off the white layer now so we can see our background again. Still using the blending tool with 8% size, 63% opacity. Starting on the far right hand side, we're going to start blending the edge of our tree out by kind of puffing out the edges just like we did with the clouds and we're using a rounded scrubbing motion with it. When you get the edge blended out, I'm going to come over here to the left hand side and we're going to blend using circular scrubbing motions. And we're going to kind of start at the top and blend these out and then repeating the same step and working our way downwards. And while we're blending, I also wanted to mention periodically every so often to leave a little bit of space between the circles open within, allowing a little bit of the trunk and the sky to still show through beneath, which will make the tree look a little bit more natural. And because we started with circles, it'll automatically give your tree a more rounded look, which looks more natural as well. So that's why I started doing the circle method and I absolutely love it. And it's really funny how I came up with this method. I always think that trees look like giant stalks of broccoli. And so my brain was like, can I paint a tree as a stalk of broccoli and then blend it out? And the answer to that is yes, yes you can. And that's how this method came to be. I just find this method to be such a huge time saver and does most of the hard work for us. Let's add a new layer and put that layer into overlay. Using the soft airbrush, about 53% size now, full opacity, using the color white, that is the third color in the first row. We're going to lay a little bit of highlight color on the right edge of the tree, and then using the fourth color in the first row, the shade of black, we're going to put a little bit of shadow on the bottom left hand side of the tree as well in a slight U shape, and then we're going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 31%. Now using the blending tool with the damp brush, about 11% size, 56% or so in opacity, we're going to lightly blend these new highlights in a circular scrubbing motion like before so they match in texture. Then we're going to merge the highlight layer and the base tree layer together. Let's make a copy of the new tree layer so there are two of them now. And then I'm going to merge the new tree layer back together into one so it's a little bit more opaque. Still using the blending tool, about 4% size, 37% opacity. Starting on the outside edge again, we're going to kind of puff out the edges a little bit more and create some finer detail textures around the edge and kind of smoothing out any areas of hardness. And we're going to repeat that around the edge of the tree. And then we're going into the middle of the tree and using circular scrubbing motions again mixed with random zigzag paint strokes to kind of puff out the edges and add areas of texture and softening any areas that might still look too circular and kind of just blending our colors together. Now let's add some leaves to our tree. In a new layer, using 3% size and full opacity, using the damp brush with the paintbrush, we're going to lay down small clusters of dots on our trees. And for the colors we're going to use, we're actually going to be color dropping the colors from the tree itself, starting with this bright yellow here from the top. And then we're going to place small little clusters of dots around the top part of the tree. And then we're going to color drop a medium shade of yellow from somewhere here in the middle of the tree. And then we're going to place small clusters of dots just like we did before in the middle portion of the tree. Then we're going to color drop a dark and medium shade of yellow for the bottom. Which will really help marry all of the colors of the tree together. And it's a little more interactive and kind of fun than just using the color palette for it. When you're happy with your dots, then I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 40%. With this medium shade of yellow that we've got, I'm going to turn the brush size to about 6% and the opacity down to 
and I'm going to lightly buff and blend this color over top of the leaves we just created. That way it kind of softens it up and kind of marries and blends all of the colors in with the rest of the tree. And that brings us to painting the grass. In this section, I will be using what I call the sad face highlight. And it's just a type of sideways sweeping paint stroke with a slightly downturned curve that is kind of like a sad face. Let's make sure our trace layer is turned on. Let's add a new layer and switch over to the soft airbrush. Using the second color in the third row with about 38% brush size. Starting on the left hand side, we're going to trace a line across our trace outline in front of the field. Making sure to slightly go over the line of the field just to make sure it's completely covered. Then I'm going to go over this line a couple of times to make it wider. Then using the sixth color in the first row and about 75% brush size, we're going to fill in the rest of the grass color. Next, switching over to the blending tool with the soft airbrush, using about 76% brush size and 50% opacity. With long sweeping paint strokes, we're going to blend this line of color together. I'm going to turn off the trace outline for just a moment. We're going to make a copy of this layer, so there's two, and then we're going to merge them back together to make it a little bit more opaque. Next, switching to the paintbrush with the damp brush, about 3% size and 45% opacity using the third color in the third row. Starting on the left hand side, we're going to start using our sad face highlight and work our way down the grass area allowing just a little bit of the dark green from underneath to still show through. Now switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 12% size and 29% opacity. With wide sweeping paint strokes, we're going to lightly blend out the highlight we just created. which brings us to painting the bushes. Let's add a new layer. Switching back to the soft airbrush with the paintbrush and using 48% size and full opacity. Using the sixth color in the first row, we're going to fill in all of the bush outlines with color. Next, using the third color in the third row, we're going to lay a stripe of color on the top of the right side bush, and then all three bushes on the left hand side. We're going to shrink our brush size to about 22%. Using the fourth color in the third row, we're going to paint a thinner stripe of color on the right bush on the top of the previous stripe, and then all three bushes on the left the same way. Then to shake it up, we're going to use the third color in the fourth row and we're going to paint a stripe of yellow underneath of the green on all four bushes. Switching over to the damp brush with the blending tool, about 6% size and 55% opacity. Using back and forth paint strokes, we're going to blend the colors together on each bush creating a nice gradient, not really worrying about the textures yet. And we're going to repeat this step on all four bushes. Now to add some texture. Now switching our brush size to about 4% and 59% opacity. Using a scrubbing painting motion on a curve to start blending this bush out. And as we start to get to the middle, we're going to start using a more random zigzag cross hatching pattern again, similar to how we did with the bushes in the back. And then we're going to repeat this step across all four bushes.
Let's add a new layer and put it into soft light. And we're gonna switch to the soft airbrush, about 34% size and full opacity. Using the fourth color in the first row, the shade of black, we're going to put a little bit of shadow on the base of each of the bushes. Now using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to 16% and we're going to turn the opacity of this layer to about 48%. I realized here I forgot to turn the silo layer back on, so I'm turning that back on now. Let's make a copy canvas and paste it underneath of our trace layer. Let's turn the trace layer back on. Now let's paint our picnic basket. Let's turn our trace layer back on. Let's add a new layer. Switching over to the fifth color in the second row and using the water pen, with 4% size and full opacity, we're going to start filling in our picnic blanket outline. A tip to make it easier, once you get the outside edge outlined, you can always color drop this color to fill it in. Let's add a new layer, using the sixth color in the second row, and we're going to place a little bit of color in the middle of the blanket area like this. And then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to about 11%. Now switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 5% size and 40% opacity. We're going to lightly blend this color out on the blanket, giving the blanket a little bit of texture. Now let's merge the two blanket layers together. I'm now going to create another new layer and I'm going to put it over the trace layer so I can see the lines a little bit better. Going to about 2% size and using the third color in the second row, we're going to fill in the picnic basket with this color. Next, let's paint the handles. Now using the fifth color in the second row, let's place a stripe of color along the top edge of the basket. And then using the first color in the second row, we're going to paint a thin line of color underneath to finish the fabric liner for the basket. Next, let's move the trace outline layer back to the top and let's turn it off. Let's make another copy canvas layer and make another duplicate of it so now there are going to be two of them. We're going to work on the top one and we're going to give the grass some texture. Switching over to the blending tool with the water pen, using 2-3% to size and 71% opacity, using short flicking motions we're going to add some texture to our grass. I started on the right side and started the texture on the edge, kind of crossing over the field area, and then I worked my way downwards, alternating size and direction of the paint strokes as I went. Dragging lighter green into the darker areas and darker green into the lighter areas for depth. and then repeated this on the other side, working my way down. Now the top layer we're working on, we're actually going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 70%. Now we're gonna start adding our finishing details. Let's make another copy canvas layer. Let's add a blank layer over the top and put it into soft light. Let's switch to using the soft airbrush in about 53% size and full opacity. Using the fourth color in the first row, the shade of black, we're going to lay a thin stripe of color on the left side, the bottom, and then the right side. And we're going to put a small U shape on the underside of the tree. Then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to about 22%.
And then using the blending tool, I'm going to blend over the tree area, softening that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 46%. Let's add a new layer. And we're going to repeat the same steps, placing a thin black line on the left hand side, the bottom and the right hand side. Only we're going to be leaving this layer in normal mode. And then using Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur this layer to about 25% and then turn the opacity of this layer down to about 21%. Next, let's make another copy canvas layer and then make a second copy again. Let's take the top of the two layers and put it into black and white. Let's add another blank layer on the top and we're going to put that layer into overlay. Using the third color in the first row and still using the soft airbrush, about 42% size and full opacity. Now we're going to place a couple of our sad face highlights sporadically on the top of the tree to emphasize the round shapes where the light will be hitting it. We're going to make the brush size just a little bit smaller and we're going to place a thin line of color on the back tree edges, the right side of the silo, and the right side of the barn, and each of the bushes. And then we're going to put a thin line on the top of the field. Now switching over to the blending tool with the damp brush, about 11% size and 40% opacity, we're going to start softly blending out all of our highlights. When you're happy with your blending, I'm going to remove the black and white layer, and we're going to turn the highlight layer opacity down to about 57%. Let's add a new layer and put it into overlay. Now using the paintbrush with the damp brush, about 4% size and 69% opacity, we're then going to lay some sporadic highlight down using our sad face technique over the grass, still leaving some darker areas exposed in between. We're going to place them on top of the bushes, the backfield again, and then the trees in the back. The left side of the silo the top left side of the barn. And I wanted to add just a little bit more here to the grass. Then switching over to the damp brush with the blending tool, about 8% size and 40% opacity, we're going to lightly blend out all of our new highlights. When you're happy with your blending, let's turn the opacity of this new highlight layer down to about 73% and we're done. Now let's sign our work. I'm so proud of you, friend. I hope you had fun along the way. So this will be a perfectly fine place to end our painting at, but if you'd like to continue painting, I wanted to do something kind of fun and add another section of painting details that I think you're going to love. 
So if our painting adventure ends here, friend, I wanted to thank you so much for supporting my art and channel, and I will see you in the next video. I have a lot more tutorials up on my channel too if you'd like to try another painting, and if you're sticking around for the challenge for the next part, I can't wait to share it with you, so let's begin. So beginning Cosmos challenge. I'm going to start by turning the signature layer back off, that way we can work without it. Let's make another copy canvas layer. Let's add another layer and put it into overlay. Now to add some detail highlights. Using the third color in the first row, that shade of white, using the damp brush now with the paintbrush, about 3% size and 69% opacity. We're going to add some additional highlight details to the grass. To the top of each bush. And a couple more sad face highlights on the tree just like this. Let's add another line of highlights to the back bushes. The top of the field. And then the barn. I'm going to add just a little bit more here to the bush. And I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 68%. Now using the blending tool with the damp brush, about 6% size and 40% opacity, we're going to lightly blend out our new highlights, and then I'm going to switch between sweeping strokes and loose scrubbing strokes to blend it out with. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity again to about 59%. I thought it was still a little too bright. Let's make another copy canvas layer and then a second. So now there are going to be two of them again. And we're going to work on the top of the two layers using the damp brush with about 2% size and 63% opacity. Then we're going to lightly blend out our bushes using zigzag cross hatching ish paint strokes again, adding more detail areas to each bush. And then I'm going to add some detail texture along the edge of the field where the field and the bushes meet. Then I'm going to make the brush size just a little bit bigger. We're going to add some more detail texture to the trees using the same painting motions. Then making the brush a little bit bigger, about 5% size and 42% opacity, we're lightly going to buff out these new details, being careful not to overblend. blend. 
I'm going to change my brush size to about 3% and using the same painting motions we used for the back bushes, we're actually going to add some more detail texture to the front bushes as well. When you're happy with your blending, I'm going to turn the top of the two layers opacity down to about 92%, and then we're going to merge the two layers together. Let's add a new layer. Using the paintbrush with the water pen now, about 4% size and full opacity. Using the third color in the third row from the palette, we're going to paint some detailed grass strokes in the corners and along the bottom of the painting like this. We're then going to use the hue and saturation tool and turn the brightness down to about 46%. And now we're going to paint a couple of detail highlight grass strokes over top of the ones that we just painted with the original color, which will really create some nice depth along the bottom of the painting. Let's merge this new grass layer onto our main layer. Next, we're going to make a second copy of our canvas, so there are going to be two of them again, and we're going to work on the top of the two canvases. Now switching over to the water pen and the blending tool, using about 2% size and 78% opacity, we're going to paint small little flicks within the field, adding some more detail texture to the field just like this. And we're going to repeat this step across the entire field. Then I'm going to add a couple more paint strokes over the grass again, kind of adding some more little details here and there just to blend the new highlights and the old grass back together a little bit better. Then I'm going to turn the opacity of this top layer down to about 61%. This will really help soften these new details and make them blend better to the bottom layer. And then we're going to merge these two layers back together. I'm going to turn my signature layer back on and we're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this bonus content. This painting covers a lot, so I hope you had fun and learned some new techniques along the way and ones that you can use for your own paintings as well. If you recreate this painting and are on Instagram, please tag me at Tim Star Studio. I would absolutely love to see it. And as always, if you like this video and want to see more content like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps my channel out, and I'll see you in the next video, friend. Happy painting!